It's a bad sign when you can't connect to the internet in your presentations on Google Drive. <laughs> Okay. Rose, I have a question for Regis A. Are we doing handout or what do we connect for both? If you can handle that, what do we connect? Go ahead and do that. I'm doing this right now. Can you hang out? I can do the hangout once I get Heather in here. Hold on a second. Okay. Because I don't know whether he can. Can you handle this without me once I add her in? Of course. Okay, great. Hold on, I need to know what was it called. Are you using your account, or how do we do that for you to say? Hold on a second. I need to find her because it, I can't seem to get. I can't seem to invite her. There you go. I got her. Yep. Once she comes in, you know how to end it, right? Mm -hmm. okay. If you open up your hangouts, you probably see that you've got an invitation. Okay, I've done. This time is here. Because I found myself wasting too much time on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Fantastic. So then you can just screen share and all of that. Thanks. I'm doing a demo on this is one of my this is my session this afternoon. So we'll hang out. So this I know we're supposed to broadcast that one too. Sorry, it took a while. All right. Thank you. I do want to stand back so I'm not on. I don't have to watch myself. Up on here. Okay, so <laughs> screen share. <laughs> So is that what's on the screen? Okay, then we're good. I'll advance. Is it advancing? No, that's um that's not the tool. Okay, you have to still share. I'm sharing. Do I like that? Yes. No, I don't have. You can share this. You don't have to share me. Okay, that's fine. It's okay. As long as it's the way you guys want it, I'm okay.
It's full room in here. Scared people away, and I don't know how advanced it is because I was told that we were doing kind of centering around iPad, so I'm happy to see there's an iPad in the room. So if you're on a laptop, that's fine. I've got experience on both sides. So I kind of want to, I wasn't sure how many people would have iPads or laptops, but I wanted to share with you guys some information about using the Google tools as far as the iPad goes and kind of talk about some of the oh, advantages and disadvantages because sometimes it doesn't always play nice with iPads. Are we ready to start or do I need to wait? Okay, a little bit about myself before I get started, and then I'll just kind of get an idea of where you guys are at from the audience in the room. Um, my name is Heather Callahan. I'm the technology integrationist for Northwest Public Schools in Grand Island, Nebraska. On my background, um, I have a bachelor's degree in elementary ed from Wesleyan, and then a master's in instructional tech from Peru. So I started my teaching career in Bellevue, Nebraska as a first grade teacher. Uh, most recently, I was teaching middle school tech classes in Grand Island, which is my hometown, so I went back to Grand Island to teach. And in the last, this is my second year as a tech integrationist. So during that time, I did a lot with kind of tech integration dual role while I was um, teaching. Our district is on year three of one-to-one. -one. We actually had two years of one-to-one -one iPads at 912, and we are now year one with Chromebooks. Um, no other reason th for the switch besides, um, as much as you hate to say it, um, money talks and just some different tools um, that we wanted. Um, one of the biggest things, we leased our iPads, and so we, our plan was originally to lease them for... <coughs> two years and then buy out the lease, use them for three years and then go back to the drawing board on device and that type of thing after year three, but because the buyout of the lease was a little more money than they were. We had some teams of teachers uh, that met. Um, we had some parents and some students and administrators that kind of met and so that's where we were at with, ended up with the, with the Chromebook. So that's kind of my background. So I do have background with iPads. Our, we have four feeder schools in our district and they're K-8 schools and so all the feeder schools have Oh, it's probably a five-to-one ratio as far as iPads. They have parts of iPads, so none of the elementaries are um, full one-to-one. -one. Uh, we have one that's pretty close, um, probably at 90%, but other than that, we have iPads and Chromebooks in our district. So from what I understand, you guys are student teaching, out teaching, still in classes? Teacher. Teacher? Okay. Student teachers. Very good. Okay. Um, this site right here has the slides that I'm going to share with you. What I try to do is kind of walk through some things, and then I try to put screenshots of what I've done in there. So if you heard something today that you don't quite have time to try and you want to go back and try it, the screenshots are there for you to reference. So this presentation is there. I went ahead and linked both of mine. My afternoon one follows it, so you can just skip through the ones that you want. If you have an iPad and have a QR or a phone and have a QR code reader, that you can scan. Otherwise, um, Bitly is a very good tool, and I'll kind of share with you how I got what the benefits to that is. But it's um, bit.ly/unltechedge, and so basically that right there is a QR code generator, and it's a Chrome extension. So there's information again. These resources are on my presentation. But what I like, there's a lot of people that like the Google URL shortener. What I like about Bitly is it allows you to um, after the ly and the backslash you can customize the address following that. So I was able to customize and have it say bit.ly slash tech edge, UNL tech edge. And that's what I like about that is that if you're working in a classroom with students, there's nothing more frustrating than when you give them a web address to go to. If you have a way to email it to them or post it in a community um, like Google Classroom or something, that makes it easy. But if you ever have to put a link and you want them to type it in, it's inevitable that they're going to miss a backslash, a colon, something, and 20 minutes later, you're finally all into that uh, website. So Bitly or UNL Shortener, where you can customize those things, is just a quick tip there as far as getting kids to where they need to be on a device. Are you guys in a school, teaching at a school that has lots of devices, a specific one? 
We're not one to one. But Elementary, high school. High school. Okay. Laptops available, Chromebooks, iPads. Laptops are available. Okay. Yeah. Difficult to come by. Yeah. Easy to check out. Easy to check out. Difficult to come by. There's not a lot. Okay. No. Student teaching. Elementary, high school. Okay. Devices available. Okay. And there's still a lot you can do with one device. Okay. Taking it all in. Okay, so from an iPad standpoint, these are the apps that you would download on an iPad as far as Drive um, and Google goes. Um, Docs, Sheets, and Slides is the most recent that Google had come out with. Most times I would say that Google doesn't talk very well with iPads or it's kind of difficult, but with the addition of the Docs, Sheets, and Slides apps, Google has become a little easier to use, and in some instances a lot easier to use on an iPad. Um, I know a couple administrators that I work with will use the Sheets app on a regular basis because they're constantly updating data or doing things. So if you are someone in the classroom where you're keeping track of data, student data, and you put it in Sheets, Sheets is very easily accessible on an iPhone or an iPad. So if you want something, if you're keeping data on students or keeping information, it's very handy to use Sheets on those devices because you can actually click on a cell or into that, enter that information on the go and it updates. Um, basically when you download those apps, how many of you have used Drive on an iPad or a mobile device? A little bit. It'll have you sign into the, your account. But as soon as, and then when you sign into Drive, you will see the folders and the different things that you have. You've got um, your grid view and your list view, and you can alternate between the two. Um, then when you click on the gear, you will be able to customize and see whether you've got incoming. Incoming are the items that have been shared with you. Are any of you at a Google school where you're using Google all the time? Okay. So you're probably familiar with these types of things. Incoming, uh, recent docs. Recent's probably my most favorite uh, section to click on because it seems like the documents that I need all the time are in my recent. Um, starred, I don't use this one all the time, but I do um, use it every now and then if I need to note something. And then what's on your device. So this would be specific to the device that you're on. So again, these are some screenshots that kind of help you go through. Um, searching for documents is very helpful. I, have, I work with a lot of teachers in my position that um, there sometimes seems to be a level of frustration with Google. And it's because when you have your Google Drive, and I don't know how familiar you guys are with it, but you open it up and it just, there's really, unless you create folders, there's not a lot of organization as far as the documents go. It just seems like a big hodgepodge and you can't alphabetize it. Um, you know, so many teachers are like, how can I alphabetize it? And even when you put it in folders, when you open up Drive, it still shows up as a list unless you specifically click on that folder. So I have a lot of situations where teachers will email me and say, I had this document on my drive and it's gone. It disappeared. And it really didn't disappear. It's just that they've been, somebody has shared documents with them and that document that they're looking for is just so far down the list that they're not patient enough to go down and look for it. And I think nine times out of ten when I want to find something on my drive, it doesn't matter if I'm on a computer or an iPad, I will just search for it by name or by, if you know it's a document that's been shared with you by another teacher or shared with you by an administrator, start typing their name and all the documents that that person owns will come up. So that's kind of a, that's what I tell a lot of teachers that I work with to kind of help ease the confusion and help, besides getting them to create folders, that kind of helps the organization there. So um, from a device, and these are screenshots from um, an iPad. And it looks similar on a computer, probably just a little bit different. Um, creating new documents on Google Drive. This is where the new sheets and uh, docs and presentations come in. When you go to create something new on your iPad or from a device, it'll actually, if you create a new doc, it'll open you up into Google Docs, the app. Or if you don't have Google Docs downloaded, it will prompt you to download that app. And if you open a new spreadsheet, it will prompt you to do that, okay? A couple things on docs that I don't have in my presentation that I wanted to mention as far as iPad, computer, you know, because pe some people get comfortable using Google Docs on a computer, and I'm one of those. But there's times when you're on the go and you want to be able to access that stuff. 
So for me on a Google Doc, I love using it on my computer. I can edit it on my iPad. A couple downfalls, though, is you cannot add images to a document from an iPad. You have to add the images or video and video from your computer. So if you're just doing basic editing or basic viewing, if you've got students want to, you know, ease into the document to kind of see what's going on on the go, that's easy to do. So if you're walking around the room and you're over here working with the group, but you want to open your iPad and see what group A over there is doing, the iPad works well for that because you can do that and you can write comments in there. But if you're really working on a document and you want to put those images and things in, the computer is a little bit easier. Um, spreadsheets, I don't know of any downfalls on spreadsheet as of right now. I don't, I do the spreadsheets mostly on my computer. But like I said, I talked to an administrator, um, Laura Kroll at Exeter Mulligan uses spreadsheets on her iPhone this is for data from her teachers um, and students and things like that. And she swears by the ease of using her spreadsheets on a mobile device. So good to know if you're keeping running records or, da or data on a Google Doc, if you need to keep it on your phone and you're running from group to group, that makes life easier. Um, slide presentations. I prefer a computer. Um, I don't mind presenting through my iPad and I don't mean create I don't mind creating slides or adding things but again when you want to do that multimedia piece your computer is your best bet um, you cannot work with themes or backgrounds on presentations but you can add text and you can advance through the slides so if you have um, if you create something on your computer and you want to easily project it I don't know if you guys have uh, Apple TVs or any technology like that in your buildings but if you have presentations that you have created on your iPad or created on your computer, that's very easy to present on your iPad. So I could actually use my iPad to present these slides very easily. Um, basically, when you go to create those documents, like I said, it's going to open it up into the type of the app that you select and give it some sort of title, or it will default to untitled. And then at this point, this is where you can edit using the keyboard and the toolbars at the top. And so you can see that those toolbars are available, a little bit limited, but if you're just doing basic things, that will work for you. And again, this would be like your doc's home screen. Um, the numbers correspond, again, this is my presentation, so you can change views back and forth of how it looks. You can view all your folders, um, you can do the individual documents, and then the plus sign at the bottom is where you add new documents. And I believe all these screenshots will be obsolete in October when Google releases their latest update to all these apps. So just so you know, this will be temporary. Some of that stuff's going to look different here in a month. Um, sheets, same thing, not a lot different. You go to create a sheet. Again, it pops you, prompts you to give it a title. After you give it a title, again, the ease of use is here. And then I went ahead. It's very similar to um, the docs. Same thing as far as the views, changing your icons and your folders and adding a new spreadsheet. But then here was, okay, I had the administrator that I know send me a couple screenshots. And so this was her screenshots directly from her iPhone, uh, showing that it is very easy to use from a mobile device. Sheets. So in her opinion, the sheets was were probably the easiest one to use from a mobile device. And she was able to enter information directly into that spreadsheet right from her phone. Okay. Um, slides, adding a slides, a slide presentation to Drive. It's again, it's going to open it up into the slides. And since slides is the newest one, I expect that one to have updates continuously uh, based on feedback from users that are using that one. Same thing, you're going to have the option to edit. But like I said, you're not going to be able to add those multimedia pieces as far as images, uh, themes, backgrounds. It's basically an option to add text to get stuff out there. And then you could do some further editing from your computer because if it's connected to Drive, you'll sync with your computer on your online account. Another screen that shows the basic views you can have, the folders you can have. Um, you can look at individual presentations. And then, again, the plus sign at the bottom, add new presentations. So basically, those types of things across the board are going to look very similar. So once you get familiar with the way it looks, it probably becomes a little bit easier to use on a regular basis. 
Here's a piece that I like to share with teachers a lot about drives, um, especially because if you have a mobile device such as an iPad in your classroom, and especially if you're elementary, you take a lot of pictures, whether it's on your phone or whether it's on your iPad. So this is a piece that I definitely wanted to touch on as far as you know Google Drive and how are you using it in the classroom. I get a lot of teachers that say, my device is full. I don't have any room. Um, I can't update to the newest iOS because I don't have any room. I can't download that app because I don't have any room. And usually nine times out of ten, the problem is the photos and the videos that they've been taking in the classroom are taking up most of the storage on their device. And so they're wondering how to get it off. You know, and simply plugging it into your laptop and exporting it over or transferring it over is a good suggestion. But what can you do on a regular basis just to constantly get that information off of your iPad or those photos? Get them clouded. And so simply, um, a simple suggestion would be to use Drive and sign into that count account. So you can simply upload your photos and videos that are already on your iPad or on your phone by going into Drive and hitting that plus sign. So before when we were hitting that plus sign, I was showing you examples to start a sheet, to start a doc, or a, a sheet, a doc, or a presentation. If you hit that plus sign and you select upload photos or videos, you can select one or more of those photos or videos from your camera roll and simply upload them to Drive. I have not had any problem with photos going to my Drive. Videos that I had longer than 10 minutes, I struggled. So under 10 minutes, and I, I'm not positive on this, but what I was told is if you had a video that was bigger than 10 meg, you know, if you had a 15 minute video, you were going to have a problem. So we had some teachers and some administrators that were doing some ALP walkthrough videos and were uploading them to YouTube to share with teachers and they were 15 minutes long and didn't quite upload, so we had to do it. And so, but simply taking, utilizing Google Drive to get photos and videos on stuff and bring it outside. If you have videos that you would like, or photos that you would like to share with parents or get printed off and you just need them off your device, Google Drive is a great opportunity for that. The other thing you can do with photos and videos right from Drive is you can instantly upload it right from taking it. So when you hit the plus sign and you start out by going to get to a sheet, to get to a doc, or to upload, you can actually choose use camera and take a photo right there. And when you're done taking that photo or video, it uploads immediately to Drive. So if you know from the beginning, if you're taking video or you're taking pictures in a classroom and you know you want that to go to Drive, and then just hit the plus sign and say use camera. And those tools work great if you're doing some sort of presentation and you want to highlight something that you've done. We've had teachers that'll use those features if they want to for open house night or tech night or math night or we've got things like muffins with mom and donuts with dad and they want to have a running presentation in the background but they want to use all these pictures that highlight the reading or the math or the things going on in the classroom. So they'll have all those images in Drive so then when they create the presentation, they're not emailing photos back and forth. So, And we have a lot of teachers that will say, I want to do a presentation and I want to use Google Slides. There's but on my place that has on more outlet. my phone or on here. So rather than sending them through email all the time, you have your pictures right in Drive. It's so slick to get those pictures right into your presentation. So as you're doing those things, that's a big suggestion I have, especially if you're using Google Slides and you want to highlight and use those pictures in a presentation to just get those right up to Drive so that you have them there. Okay? Um, I guess I wanted to take an opportunity here, too, to kind of talk about some other great apps and why they're uh, great for kind of compiling with Google Drive. Um, when I talked about putting pictures on your iPad or getting pictures onto Drive, so if, you're, if you have students using iPads or you're using an iPad, anything that you can save to your camera roll. So if you have students using Sketch, or I didn't put this one up here, I don't think, but uh, PicColage, you guys familiar with those apps? So Sketch and PicColage are probably my go-to apps on an iPad that students use daily, especially my lower elementary kids when I get into kindergarten and first grade classrooms, uh, Sketch and PicColage. And the one thing I love about them is that you can save your final projects to the camera roll. Any app that you can save to the camera roll, your final project, there it is in your camera roll, easy upload to Drive. So whether they're using, you just have to sign into that Drive and sign back out, you could sign into your own Drive on that iPad, have them upload those pictures. Um, 
the QR code creator, then you can create QR code links to that. Haiku Deck has an opportunity. Haiku Deck is a great one. If you're using Haiku Deck, you can export it out and then import it into a Google presentation. You export out your slides from Haiku Deck and put them into a Google presentation because your Google presentations, if you publish them, you can set them to run. So if you're doing a presentation that you want highlighted in the classroom while you're talking to parents, you want it to run, but you have students created in Haiku Deck. Let's say you've got a classroom and you've got five kids doing Haiku Deck, export them all out, combine them into one Google presentation, then you have an opportunity to switch to that in your classroom. So Skitch, um, and then the other one is not education. Um, explain cost, but explain everything is like the video one where you can annotate and take a video while you're creating something. Again, those videos and explain everything can be saved to your camera roll. So those type of video files could be uploaded to Drive. So those are just some suggestions as far as when you're utilizing apps. Um, I do a session that I present on to staff, and I've done it at a couple different tech conferences of app smashing where you utilize different apps. And that's probably the biggest thing we say when we talk about app smashing is anything you can create, have kids create, or you can create on your iPad that can save your camera roll. You just open up so many possibilities for other use when you combine it into another app and save it to Google Drive and then push it into a presentation and things like that. So those are just options, too. And all the links to these are also um, in my presentation if you link to it. So um, the other thing I wanted to do is kind of give you some options for some Google cheat sheets. And then I just kind of wanted to talk through with you guys some things that you're using, some questions you may have as far as you know, iPad use, Google Drive, other questions that I can answer you. So this one links right here to just a basic cheat sheet. And this is something that you can keep for yourself. You can share with other people in your buildings. This link right here, it just kind of goes through what like the home screen looks like and searching. This is beneficial for students, it's beneficial for teachers, it's beneficial for administrators. Um, something that I have just readily available because I get lots of questions from teachers a lot on you know, how do I access this or they don't, and if you don't access things like this, you don't, on a regular basis, you might forget. So this is just a handy tool that um, I've even had teachers that'll simply just print it off in color and laminate it and just keep it by their computer or keep it in their school bag so they have an easy reference on how to do things, um, how to do Google things, I like to say. And an infographic on the iPad. Um, the other thing that I think is very important to realize is the Chrome browser. When you're using Google tools or anything connected with Google, um, I always suggest to teachers to utilize the Chrome browser. Obviously, the Chrome browser is a lot more robust on a, on a laptop computer than it is on an iPad. But the nice thing is, is when you're signed into the Chrome browser, you're going to see all of your bookmarks and your favorites and your extensions and your apps on the device that you sign into later. So this works really well for students that if you're not in a one-to-one -one environment, and students are using different devices throughout the day. They go into a computer lab, they log into an iPad, or they log in and they go into a computer lab and on a different computer. If they're using the Chrome browser, they will be able to consistently access that information that they would have saved or bookmarked on their Chrome browser because it's specific to their Chrome account. Okay. I just wanted to take an opportunity to kind of ask some questions from you guys. Obviously, it's going to be hard to start a little conversation with four people in the room. But what, do um, you have any questions as far as things that I've said? Maybe you've tried to use a Google tool in a classroom, or maybe students are using it and you have trouble accessing certain things. Um, if I don't know an answer, I'm happy to find it or get you in connection with the right people. One thing I want to do, um, but I haven't really found a way, is, well, just school, I know this is a Google classroom, but I'd like to get into using Google classroom, I think, I think that's fantastic. And I actually, there's actually a session on Google Classroom. And I think it's this afternoon. Yeah. Is that right, guy? The session on Google Classroom. Right now. Oh, it's right now. But it is recorded. It is recorded. It is recorded. So we can enjoy. And the nice thing also about Google Class about Google Classroom is it's so new, and they're constantly well, making updates. Um, we have probably 50 percent, 40 percent of our high school teachers on Google Classroom. The one thing to remember is that they were going to initially launch it in September, and they rushed to launch it in August. 
So there's, pro there's a lot of glitches and a lot of things that teachers say, I wish it had, I wish it had. But the, to me, that's almost beneficial because it gives, them, gives all of us opportunities to give them feedback and to do nothing but and make it better for teachers. The, and the nice thing is, you know, when you're using your Google Drive, that what the classroom will do, it'll streamline that. So if you're using Google Drive to send out assignments to students, that inevitable make a copy before you write on this, make a copy, or you always have to tell kids to make a copy, and it's inevitable that somebody won't, and then you've got two or three kids typing on it, Google Classroom takes that step out because it allows you to push one button and make a copy for all your students to have. And the other big thing about that is when we talked about Google Drive earlier when I mentioned that sometimes when you open it up, I know I have a lot of teachers that just get so overwhelmed with the organization and what's where and I can't find this and I can't find that because they're not in tune to making folders. And I always say, if you have non-techie teachers that are very concerned about that organization, imagine what that does to freshmen. Freshmen that are using Google Drive that have stuff all over the place. And Google Classroom, when you put kids in your classroom, it automatically creates a drive folder for them called Classroom. And in that Classroom folder is a folder for each class they're in, in Classroom. Does that make sense? So if you send them something for math, they'll have a classroom folder, and under that they'll have a folder called math, and the things that you send them or correspond with them will be in that folder. So that's what I mean by that kind of helps streamline that Google Drive piece for you and for your kids. I guess for me, the, the question is about Google Classroom, is that I want to use it, but the issue is, is math is so, so different over. than any other so We're going to broadcast from the computer inside there. We're yeah. going to get them right now. It'd be nice, and maybe there's something out there. Maybe you know. Uh, if I upload a PDF of the worksheet that a student can use this style write on it and show okay. their work, but I um, but I need to I, find. I looked on and I haven't found anything. We there's an and I can't think of the extension off the top of my head, and I can send a tweet out for it later. But we had a couple math teachers that used a Google Chrome extension, so sent the PDF to Google Classroom and a Google Chrome extension that was a uh, allowed the ability to write or type on a PDF. Google Chrome, and I, if I, after the session, I can get your information. I can actually email that to you, and, and they use that. No, for the Chromebook. Oh. For a laptop. There's also the iPad ones. There's type on PDF apps, free apps that you can um, type on PDF is one, and then you can do. You can annotate. Yeah. Yep. And notes, what's that one called? Notes. Good notes. Good notes. Yeah, good notes is another one. And I don't know if that one. But for math, I would argue that you need to actually have something for a variety of reasons. But I would argue that it's set for math, you really want to style it to be. But if you're going to go and not, you know, to, to send them information, so if you do, if you do any slide presentations, Google slide presentations, one of our math teachers will send out their slide presentations to Google Classroom. And so they'll send it out. And in this situation, you would send it as an assignment and make a copy, have it make a copy of your slide presentation for each student. <laughs> because in Google Slides, you can have that notes. You know how you can see your presentation notes at the bottom? So what she does is she has the kids take notes in that uh, presenter notes section in the bottom. So then they're not taking notes on the computer to figure out what slide those will be on the notes. If they have a copy of your slides, then they can use them in the notes and jot their notes directly with the slide that corresponds to the information that they're receiving. So that seemed to work really well from that. That doesn't take that doesn't help you with the work and getting that ease back and forth, but as far as organizing their notes and keeping that information together, that was the suggestion that I gave to a couple math teachers that they're using. Other Google Drive workflow type questions that I can answer for you? There's just something to be said about giving kids that information and presenting it to them and sharing the drive. You know, having them collaborate is big, but then as a teacher, anytime you can use Drive to send out information, you're not giving them those printed handouts, you're not giving, and even parents too. Anytime they, you can post it onto your website or anything like that, it gives them constant access. It takes away that excuse from kids saying, I lost it or I can't find it. Just one eliminates one of those pieces. If you save my presentation, 
Am I not in full screen anymore? Um, let me go back. There you go. If you go to that site for my presentation and go to that slide, that can or scan the QR code. Yeah, so he will be fine. What I need to give you so that you can set up to the next room. Um, you've got, you've got. Okay. So which room are you going to be in? Do you know? And then I have links to the QR code generators um, and the Chrome extensions there. Are you guys Chrome browser users? I think it doesn't matter right now. Use Chrome browser. I'd like you to sign in as Tech Edge. So Tech huh? Edge, let me give you what the. Yes, Safari. That's always probably one of my biggest things with teachers that I work with is if you're going to use the Google tools, and you're going to, and there, obviously there's things that don't work on Chrome. There's always something. We always have some glitch with some old software, some old things that teachers are using, and so some, every now and then they'll have to go back to IE or Safari. But for most things, if you're using Google tools, your Google Chrome browser is going to streamline that for you and for your kids. Other questions about Drive? And basically what I did to this presentation, I don't know if you're familiar with it, how to post those. Basically, instead of sharing it with all of you, I just made it a public link. And so by making a public link, you have access to it. So if that's something you do on a, if you have presentations you want to share with kids and you don't want to hit share, 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 share with parents, you just publicize it and then you can send a link to them that they have that information. So that's how you could share your slide presentation with them as well. But through Google Classroom would really make that workflow seamless and create the copy for them. Other questions I can answer for you? I think the biggest thing that teachers that I work with love about Drive is the ability to take their photos and videos and things off and put them in Drive because our teachers have had, had iPads for three years, and so we're definitely at a point where they're downloaded. They've downloaded so many apps. They've been taking pictures for three years, and they don't always take them off. You know, they might send them somewhere else, but when they send them to themselves via email or put them on Shutterfly or whatever they're doing, they're not taking them off their their um, iPad. So, um, with that, okay. So our district, I work for LPS, but we use Google. Google Docs. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say down the road for some reason they don't support it anymore, and you go already put all these pictures. So what happens? Um, there's something called, and I just learned about this at a national, the ISTE conference I went to. There's something called Google Takeout, and this is what we suggest to teachers that may leave a district that's using Google. So Google Takeout allows you to download, and I haven't tried it, but I I sent it the references to a, an administrator that was. They promote it to ISTE. It's called Google Takeout and allows you to download all of your Google Drive documents and then upload them to another account, if that makes sense, like your personal account or the new one. So it downloads it in like a one stop shop. Yes, yes. So it's kinda that was one of my big takeaways because I always have teachers that say, um, you know, that are leaving or something, and you've got all these. And the biggest part is if you share something. You know, whether it's RTI information and administrator information, if someone shares it with you but you want that information, it's not yours, you still have to do some legwork as far as making a copy so you own the document because you can't download drive files that you don't own, but all the stuff that you own, you can do that too. Would you say, just in terms of storage for personal use, uh, I mean, is there one better than the other that we would say, like, for instance, if I want to back up all my pictures and Files. My pictures I put on my personal Gmail, and I save them to Google Plus as well. I have some, some of them are on Drive. I think most of my school pictures that I take are on my Google Drive, uh -huh. but my personal photos I upload to my personal Google Plus account because then it goes in. You can put it into Flickr and you can print them off a lot easier. And what I like about it too is when you use the Google Plus, you can set it private so it doesn't like share it. So my photos are on my Google Plus, and I have it set up on my iPhone that when I'm connected to internet, it will just automatically put them in Google Plus, but I have the share turned off, so nobody, it's not like I'm posting. Every time I take a picture, it's not creating a Google Plus post for me.
but I like my school pictures on my drive and it, because it's just easy when I'm creating a presentation or sharing student work with teachers or administrators. I have that to just dump in there easily. Other questions? Are the three on service teacher? What student teacher? Okay. Here in Lincoln. Yeah. So let me ask you, are you blogging? No. Okay, you, you know what that is, right? Yeah. You know what blogging is. Right. And one of the advanced tools that's inside of Google is Blogger. But there's also an advanced tool called YouTube. Now, do you know how to actually record yourself in YouTube? Did you know you could do this? Tag team, right? Can you bring up YouTube? I'll show you how to do this. I don't. I might. I don't. I don't know where you're going, but so I. So if you go to Google and go to your matrix down there, boxes. So go to YouTube. Right over there. That's the waffle. We call that the waffle app launcher. Well, us math teachers call that a matrix. <laughs> <laughs> now click on upload. You don't actually have to search, but click on the upload. That, that would be how you would actually upload a file. But over on the right side, scroll down a little bit. Notice where it says web hangout. Yeah, a little bit up, right above hangouts. Right up there where it oh. says web hangout. Yeah. You hit record. I'm not going to hit record. You can actually record yourself. Now, one of the nice things about Blogger and all the Google files is that it's interactive. Yeah. So if you're a blogger and you want to do a blog, like I've never done the webcam ca webcam capture, but I've done like screen casting. Yeah. That's the same thing, but um, and you had one of the ones up there for uh, what was it, voice? Adobe Voice. Adobe Voice app. One, one Phenomenal. App that just came out recently, but using blogs and the Adobe Voice, I mean, they're real similar. And great ways to do in multiple assessments. There's a lot of story retail that young kids can do through that Adobe Voice. That's what we have a lot of elementary teachers doing. Little kids doing story retails, beginning, middle, and end, all those types of things. We used to use tele yeah, we used to use Telegami a lot, that app, but that app's kind of I don't know, the updates got a lot of in app purchases and the kids can't customize their gammies anymore. So I've kind of pushed teachers more towards that Adobe voice for that type of thing. Thank you for your time, guys. I appreciate it.